we're going to continue on with our discussion of some really powerful conceptual pieces that honestly don't have much functional impact to the code we're writing, but have a great design piece. It's a really it's going to increase what we can do and how we can put together our systems. And that's going to be around interfaces. So the idea of an interface is you can define the capabilities of something without having to define what it exactly does. So think of it this way. We can talk about electricity. And when I want to talk about electricity, I'm going to basically have some expectations. I'm going to have voltage. I'm going to have amperage. It's going to be 120 volts. It's going to give me some range of amperages, depending on the plugs and the wires and stuff behind it. Um, but there's some interface that I'm guaranteed. I, it's going to provide me power. Um, I can run my laptop. I can run my desktop. I can run my vacuum cleaner. I can run my power tools, whatever I want to be able to plug into that. In this situation, I don't care what the source of that electricity is. I just care that I'm getting my 120 volts and my 10 amps or whatever I need for my device. So it could be a coal burning plant. It could be a new hydroelectric dam. It could be wind power. It could be you know, this lady sitting there on her treadmill or her bike just you know hiking away. Go, 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 go. As long as I got my electricity, you have met the interface. You've met the contract of what we're expecting to have come along here. And so that's the idea of an interface in Java as well. Um, now, we can sort of kind of do a little bit of this through inheritance. So in inheritance, we could have a submarine out there. And one of the things a submarine does is it switches through water. Uh, so, you know, propellers and jets and whatnot. It goes underwater, it splits, sp switches through water. And I can come along and say, hey, I also have whales that swim through water, underneath water like that. And they, they come up to the surface every so often and trade out air and stuff. So there's a lot in common with these, isn't there? We can just use the, the hierarchy. We have an abstract class and define each one of these guys down below. Well, in inheritance, I'm not just talking about capabilities. I'm talking about everything. When I inherit, I inherit everything. I, everything that a submarine is, is now something a whale is as well. And I can only, as we're going to see, be one of those things. Um, so there's going to be limitations to the way. And so we get everything in common, and we don't necessarily want to be all of the information out there. So when I have the method out there to cool the nuclear, re nuclear reactor, my whale doesn't need that method. It doesn't need to go and do that. So... What if I just redesigned my interface? That I say so I have a new parent class inside of there. I call it Swimmer, and so this is a design choice. If you have some sort of hierarchy where you don't have everything that lines up exactly the one to, you just go create a new parent class, something that they have in common. It doesn't have to be necessarily a logical real thing. I mean, it's a, it's a role that plays in this case. A, a swimmer is just one of the things that a whale does, as long as being a fisher, and it's one of the things that a nuclear submarine does, as well as shooting nuclear things around or spying on people or things like that. So this works pretty well. I can go and add in a specific interface, except um, a whale is also a mammal. And in Java, I'm not allowed to be both of them at the same time. Um, there's a concept in some other languages that's called multiple inheritance, where I could be both a swimmer and a mammal. But in Java, I don't get to do that. The reason why Java doesn't want to do that is because what if both mammals swim and swimmers swim and they swim in different ways? How do I know which swimmers implementation am I supposed to use? That's fundamentally the issue in multiple inheritance and that's why Java said instead of trying to sort that out and give some way to sort that out, I'm just going to not let you do it at all. And so honestly, if I'm going to go off and build a whale class, I'm going to be more of a mammal than I'm going to be a swimmer. I'm going to breathe. I'm going to reproduce, I'm going to feed my young, I'm going to do a bunch of things like that. It's much more important than the one thing that I happen to do is swimming, but I don't want to have to throw, throw out the swimming. So what I can do in Java instead is I can create what's called the interface, we just talked about, that is a swimmer. It defines a capability of something. As we said, a role. You can think of interfaces as something, one aspect of what a class can do. One of many things it can probably do, and it does it in a bunch of different ways, but when I care about a role, I don't care how you 
wash my car. I just want my car to be clean. So you could be a big machine that washes my car. You could be a hand wash place. Um, if I care about hand washing, then I want to go specifically to a hand wash place. If I don't care, then I just ask for a car wash. And that's the idea of an interface. So if I don't care, I can specify it at a high level. It's only functional. I am only dealing with methods. I'm not assuming any data behind there. I'm not assuming when I say swim that I'm flapping arms or wiggling a tail or whirling a propeller. I'm just saying there's some way that I get the behavior of swimming. And so in this design, I can be a mammal. I can extend out and be a mammal, and I can swim however I want to swim inside of that. So let's talk about how we realize the code for this in Java. The swimmer interface then, or any interface, is created much like a class is created. It has its own file. It's named after the interface, so swimmer.java. And instead of saying public class swimmer, I say public interface swimmer. And at this point, I'm not going to have any data items unless they're constants. You are allowed to put constants instead of there. And then you just have a list of methods. Now, the idea behind constants is if I have red, green, blue, black, that's signified by a number, and I just want to be able to know what number equates to red, green, blue, black, I can put those constants inside of there. So I can define some things. But it can't be dynamic data. It's, it's, you, know, you, don't, you can't tell um, a class what data it wants to have in, in an interface. I can give it a method that implies there's data. I just can't actually add data items here. So you can see the method here has no implementation. It ends with a semicolon. Switch through water, whatever parameters you want to pass through there, and any parameters are allowed, and end. And so this is essentially an abstract method. Just like we saw in before, abstract classes have abstract methods. I don't have to state it as being abstract. It just is because it's in an interface. So I am, as I said, allowed to put constants inside of there. So I can say, for in this case, I can set the speed. Now, when I say set speed, I'm implying that there's some sort of storage. There's some sort of information that's being on there. But I don't tell how it's stored. I, don't, I mean, it could be the whale that keeps that information. It could just be. I could just ignore the speed. Whales only go slow. But I can set my speed to fast or slow, and those are constants that are out there. Um, I'm also allowed to have nothing in an interface, by the way. I could have just a tagger interface, which just means I'm allowed to be one of these things. We'll see interfaces like that later on. There's an interface called Serialize that you'll see when you get into advanced Java um, that you can use. Um, then there's the, you know, the constants you can put in there, and then any number of methods. I can have any number of return types, parameters, whatever I want to for the methods that I can normally legally define. If you have a variable, it must be final, though. That's the important part. So when I implement this interface now, much like when I did extending a class earlier, I say public class whale implements swimmer. So it's not extending swimmer, it's implementing swimmer. I'm not doing any extension there. I'm just realizing what's going on in swimmer. At this point, I must now provide an implementation for each and every method up above. If I need data to store, I have to provide the data to store here. So once I implement it, I'm saying I'm binding myself to this contract. I know how to swim, and I will perform these methods for you. So if I need data, I store it, and then each method has an implementation, whatever it's going to be. I'm not showing the implementation. You could have it be blank. Switch through water. I'm just not going to do anything. I'm just in the water. I'm just naturally swimming. Or more likely, you'd have some code, some implementation inside of there. Now, we said... In Java, you're not allowed to do multiple inheritance. I can't be a mammal and a swimmer class, but I can have multiple interfaces. So let's say I have a bunch of roles things can play. One of the things is you can swim. So you can be a, a submarine and swim. You can be a whale and swim. You can be a fish and swim. You can be a human and swim. Or I can be a fisherman. So I can be a bird and be a fisherman. I can be a whale and be a fisherman. I can be a human and be a fisherman. Whatever something that goes off and catches fish. I can also be a speaker. Um, so I can make noise. Whales, you know, they sing, right? They make, they make noise. And so anything that speaks can make noise. Those are roles that are played. Those are just functionality. I'm just binding a set of functionality together. So I can, as you can see here, go through and implement all of these. I can extend a class. I can only extend one class. And I can implement any number of them by just putting commas between the classes there. And so from the swimmer class, I have these methods. I can switch through water. I can set the speed. I can get the speed. Uh, from the fisherman class, I can catch fish. Now, this comment is just 
to help you read it. There's no required comment inside of there. And then from speaker, you can see I can have a speak method. And I return my whale song inside of there. So any implementation that I have, any abstract class that I extend that has abstract methods, any interface I implement that has methods, I have to provide them in order to become a concrete class. Now, it's possible I don't have to do that. I can ignore them all. I can just create an abstract whale class that I know I'm going to be a mammal, and I can implement speaker, fisherman, and uh, swimmers, fisherman, and speaker. And besides that, go for it. I can choose to implement some of these, or none of these, or all of these. I can, let's say the mammals all speak, I can let the mammals speak class implementation take care of it for me. In this case, what I'm implying is there's this category called whale, and it's going to be up to you to come up with humpback whale, orca, uh, you know, blue whale, you know, whatever different types of whale there are out there. And you realize that functionality. You tell me how to implement it later on. So the interface works alongside of inheritance to help us specify it. Inheritance is telling you what you are. Inher in, in interface is telling you an aspect of what you do or what you can do. So you are a person. You are a mammal. Those are all things you inherit from. You might be a student, at least for now. You can do studious type things. You might be an employee. You might be working somewhere. You might be a, a coder of Java. At least you're learning to do that. Um, those are all things that you do part-time, but that's not what you are. And that's kind of what an interface is when we're modeling it, and certainly what it turns out to be when I code it. So we're going to go more into this, but that's the concept of separating what abstract classes are versus interfaces.